All right, here we go. We got this new miner. About to get started on taking this apart. Let's see what we got. We have E-Man over here at HM Tech. He's the lead technician over here with many years of experience. Oh, he's here. Hey, hey. So we got Scott here, chip level expert. And then we have E-Man here, the lead tech at HM Tech. And then we have other experts over here, overlooking. Let's see what we got, well, let's see what we got here with the Desiwi Miner. Hopefully I haven't said that right. This is a K10 Pro. 170 tera hash. It's supposed to do 200 tera hash a boost. Wow. Test points in here, which makes it real nice. So it makes it easy to find the bad chip with yeah. the open test points. The uh, oscillator is on the controller, not the hash board. So. The oscillator is on the control card, not the hash board. Where is it at on there? <coughs> There's one. There. There. So, what's the benefit for that? Well, I mean, in particular, it's when it's waiting for it to come It's not really yeah, a benefit or not. It's just kind of where it is. I mean, arguably, there's something to be gained from having the locus of the clock, which sets the uh, uh, comms protocol frequency you know, on the controller, not the hashboard, which is a super temperature contingent. But Control is always setting it. It's, when yeah. you have the crystal on here, you're just having a base for the controller to multiply off of. Right. Yeah, each right. ASIC has an onboard PLL VOC divider. Uh, so that's bas basically it means that the. Um, so when you're talking about a UART signal bus or a spy or. I mean, technically speaking, UART doesn't actually require a clock. However, um, your transceive and receive need to be within 10% of each other. That's crazy. We just found out that one hash board has 364 chips. Lots of chips, low voltage, high density. Low clock frequency, low voltage, low average, and not generate a lot of heat on the board by itself. That way they can run at a higher ambient It's pretty smart. And the crazy heat sink is this one. This is the one with the heat pipes in it. Oh, is it? Is it what? piped? Yeah. It's, it's, it's There's heat pipes in the heat sink, too? Copper heat pipes inside. They had one off at the, uh, at the show. That's a manufacturing <laughs> challenge if I've ever heard of it. And it's flip, flip it's that over? Like, I don't yeah. even know if it's a little No, it's definitely high, heavier. It's copper in the middle. Sandwich. It's it's heavier than an XP, but smaller than an XP. Yeah. There's like these there's single tubes. They don't, they don't connect to anything. They go, I assume, yeah. like this. There's like a bunch yeah. of them. That. So kind of like the sequence of the chips, but for the two going yeah. through the heat sinks. So, so it's similar technology of like when they just built my house, they built the roof, and I seen this new type of stuff they put in my roof in the attic that circulates hot air away from the roof in between the rafter or whatever they're called. 
know, here they have them fully cooked as material, so it's some sort of like vapor, um, some sort of <coughs> physics craziness that's going to get the heat to more vision spread as opposed to just going through copper. Um, can you explain what you said earlier about the intake and how the hash rate goes down and what's that called again? Yeah, they have, they, they showed off this uh, dynamic control where I, he told me to do it and I covered up the intake fans to the, this miner and um, they have a little screen on the front that shows you the hash rate and the efficiency and when I covered up the intake right now it's not getting any cooling air into the machine. And the first thing you saw on the screen was the efficiency start to tank as the miner warmed up. But then, to counteract that, it uh, started dropping the hash rate so to counteract the uh, increasing temperature. And so it's like, you know, not instantly, but very quickly, a control loop, like changing the, the metrics of the miner to uh, get it in its most optimal state. So in other words, if you had a container full of these and you got a 115 degree day for whatever reason, and there's mud in the filters and you got low intake on the cooling side then the entire container would drop in hash rate but for a good reason because it's saving itself from overheating and all that stuff and just sticking with the ambient air coming in or whatever it is it's going to be monitoring the temperature and the efficiency and i, I think he was telling me it controls for temperature wow they took the other side apart with the heat sink so for each row of chips they've got a copper pipe to distribute the heat load back back out to the heat sink that's awesome it's pretty smart really it's also expensive they care He's, a lot about thermal management he said they two hundred dollars for heat sink. Built for yeah. desert. I oh, like they got three of those in there. Yeah. But I paid in Bitcoin to them on the spot and got the one that they had on the table. So it's literally the first one in America. Retail price three grand. Yeah. Retail price is three grand. I think so. Three grand retail. Uh, thirty Patera hash. They want thirty dollars a T for the for the ultra, and then twenty five a T for this one. Okay, so. Each of these digital I.O. groups has a PTC, uh, an SMD PTC right here, a positive thermal coefficient uh, thermistor. Um, I have to wonder if that's related to thermal management or if they actually just felt like they needed a bunch of resettable fuses, but I kind of feel like it's the formal, or the former rather than the latter. It looks like they've decoupled every um, spy bus line here, what I assume to be spy. Um, <clears throat> And then we've got low frequency decoupling with this big capacitor right here. Yeah, let's put it back together and run it and see what the numbers look like. So what do you think so far with what you see? Uh, I think they're taking a different approach to how to achieve higher hash rate, which is pretty cool to see. Um, so far, most of the manufacturers try to pack chips onto a board, high frequency, high power, and hit their target mark. It looks like Desui is trying to do a, a high chip count and be more efficient, so lower voltage, lower frequency, thus generating less heat, and hit higher targets. So, time will tell. We gotta, uh, we gotta torture test it and see what's up. All right, we got it back together, and let's cut her on. Set baud rate and pull in Got the little logo popping up at the beginning. We're doing a hard reboot on it right now, so we can get in and just note, the power supply is not two C13s, but two C19s. So it's like twice what's minor. And the, I was told the PSU is around 5,400 watts. And this bad boy got freaking speedometers on it. Get ready to take off, folks. All right, we got our hashing. At 171 tera hash right now. There's the data for you. All right. Well, I'm here with Scott, and he's going to give you a basically a conclusion to what we just did with testing for literally the last three hours uh, just in normal mode we didn't go any higher than that because people have to go back to work you know people have jobs
We don't yes. have a lot of time. Well, thank you to uh, Coin Dad for inviting me down here to HM Tech to take apart this brand new miner. Apparently, this is serial number one or something. It's the first one they ever made, and I'm like still tripping off of that. Yeah, yeah I <laughs> literally saw you here. By at the, it, at it, the conference, and it I, has the date, basically, which is June 29th, 2023, 0001. So it's the first miner that they ever made, and they also confirmed to me from China that HM Tech and us uh, are first in the world to take it apart down to the chip level. Well, very excited to uh, be a part of that process. Uh, yeah, this thing's pretty cool. Um, we got it up to 179 terahash, right? And um, it's it's rated at 4,800 watts is what we got. 5,200 watts. It's, but it goes up to we go, we're running at 4,800. Right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. 5,200 watts. Um, but the cool thing was taking it apart, right? This thing has a thousand ninety-two ASICs <laughs> inside of it. We took it apart. It's got these crazy heat sinks that have um, uh, copper. Uh, heat pipes in, uh, milled into the bottom of the heat sink. Uh, is piece. that soldered together in there? I believe it's soldered together, yeah. Inside the aluminum heat sink, we got a copper heat pipe uh, because that is these guys claim to fame. Right? That's what they're doing. They have Their, their chip is a, an 8 nanometer process, which is a previous generation, right? but they're still claiming 22 joules per terahash, which is pretty fantastic. That's what the latest 5 nanometer ASICs are pulling. So, the claim to fame here is that they have a lot of them in there. They have 1,092 chips in there, and they've got like a super good temperature control. They're able to get the heat out of there so that that ASIC can run right at its like optimum operating point, so that the efficiency can stay uh, good. And they, they control for heat, which is kind of unique in a miner. That normally they're controlling for the maximum hash rate. But these guys are going to control for heat, so it's like here in Texas, and it's super hot. You're still going to be able to get that efficiency um, because they got the sweet heat sinks in there, and they, the control board actually like controls for heat. We thought we saw some uh, temperature sensors on each one of the voltage domains. Uh, not quite sure how that works. I'd love to figure that out. But uh, yeah, it was it was it has got this little screen on it right here, and uh, it was it was telling us it was running at 22 joules per terahash. Fantastic, and it's it's a little smaller than your uh, your um, the XP. Uh, yeah, the S19 XP. It is a little heavier, uh, but smaller than the XP, and yeah. heavier because the heat sinks are more, you know, heavy duty with yeah. the pipes in there, and then all the chips because uh, there's so many chips. So basically, it's a density thing yeah. with a lot of power packed into this box that's smaller than the XP. Yeah, I mean we don't we don't normally see a thousand uh, ASICs in a miner this size. Like the XP has a third that many chips. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, this thing is uh, set up to run at uh, pretty high power. It's got these two C19 uh, plugs here. It's got power switch. It's not C13, guys. It's C19. Yeah, that's for the juice. Uh, got power switch. That's pretty cool. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was pretty cool to take this thing apart. So thanks, you guys, for uh, letting me see that. Yeah, and thanks to HM Tech and to Gerald and the team over here. Shout out to E-Man. Yes, who actually did the taking it apart. And yeah. he put it back together and it worked again. This yeah, thanks like... Thanks for not messing up my minor, E-Man. I appreciate it. <laughs> nice work. All right, you'll, you guys will see it at the future conferences because I'm going to put it in the museum. And obviously, I'm going to be running it in between the museums. Yeah, no, we didn't even mention that. That's the crazy part. When this oh. thing's running full out, it's, we were all standing here right next to it. It's having a regular conversation. Fine. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. That's the, the noise part of it is like the much better. Much lower. Much yeah. lower decibels yeah. than, than most, most miners that size. All right. See y'all later. Hope you guys enjoyed this review of the world's first, uh, well, the most powerful air cooled miner in the world right now. First one. First one, yeah. Serial number one. That's pretty awesome. Later.